Hi, my name is Kurt Clore and this is Michael White and we're from Automatic Irrigation. Today we're here to talk about how to program a Rainbird smart clock. So this is the ESP ME smart clock from Rainbird. It's a modular clock with 4 to 22 stations available. It looks a lot like the regular ESP4 ME clock that you're probably used to, but it programs very differently. This clock decides your irrigation schedule on its own based on the inputs that you give it. It is, includes an on-site weather station, and it has the ability to actually measure rainfall by the tenth of an inch. The good thing about this clock is it was only going to water when you need it, so it's estimated it's going to save you from 30 to 70 percent on your water and your water bill if you're paying for water. Let's talk about configuring this controller. The one thing you need to remember is if you're used to using typical controllers, this controller is quite a bit different. So you prepare yourself and also prepare your client because this will, this will function quite a bit differently. So in configuring this controller, you have to set up things like the time and the day like you would any other controller. But one of the first things you would do is to, when you um, install this controller, is you install the zip code. And the reason for that is, is that it, this controller has um, a memory chip in it that has all the zip codes in the United States and Canada and probably some other countries. And it has some sort of history for the last five years of what the weather has been. So in conjunction with the fact knowing where the controller is installed and there's actually a rain catchment device with a temperature sending device, temperature sensing device, this controller can make some decisions on its own, but it requires a little more information. So once again, the zip code will tell it some of that. You also have to go in here and tell this particular controller uh, what days, if you will, that you don't want it to water. So if you say that you know, there's mowing crews on certain days or maybe I only want it to water three days a week because of the uh, um, water restrictions in your area or something of that nature, you have to go in and tell it the days it can't water. Okay, and set the watering window because it, it has a mind of its own. It's going to want to water um, maybe 24 hours a day or any time it chooses unless you say, I only want you to water from 1 in the morning until 6 in the morning. And if you program that window, no problem. That's exactly what it'll do. It'll stay within those parameters, providing you've given it enough parameters to get the watering needed. Uh, and the other thing you can do here is you can select, say for example, you have one zone of drip that's underneath the EV of your house that rain really doesn't have any effect. The controller won't know that. You can tell it, don't affect zone one or zone 12 or whatever zone you choose. So that zone always gets some water. So you can program that. And then you can go back to a uh, review setting and you can review exactly what those things are. It's a little clearer if you look at them um, when you're all done. So now you've told the clock when it's allowed the water, basically. Now you have to enter the zone information for each of your zones so it knows what it is watering. So you go to the zone setup wizard. You select many different options. You select your soil type. It could be clay, loam, sand, depending on your particular area. Around here, it's mostly clay. Um, you're going to enter some sprinkler details. So the zone type you're running. Is it going to be a sprinkler? Is it going to be drip? Uh, you, you tell it what water window to follow because you do have the option to enter two different ones. So you tell each zone which water window to follow. You choose the type of sprinkler. So if you're running, a, 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 you might be, have to tell it whether you're running rotors or sprays. And then you enter the precip rate. It has a, a, a default value in here, but you can change that rate if you're using a sprinkler that maybe puts down a little less water, a little more water. You then enter your cycle and soak details. So you can tell it what kind of slope you have. The more slope you have, the easier it is for water to run off. So it might, the controller might control that a little bit by cycling and soaking. So it'll run for 10 minutes, off for 10 minutes, run for 10 minutes, etc. to make sure that uh, water has time to soak into the soil. You also tell it, you can either have it set automatically to cycle and soak, or you can set your own values if you want. Next you select what kind of plants you have in the zone. So it could be lawn, could be uh, flowers, you know, whatever, whatever it is, you select that. You then select your shade factor, so it could be 25% shade, 50% shade, full sun. These are all things that are going to affect how much water is evaporated out of the soil. You can set a refill point if you would like. The refill point basically tells the controller when it should refill the water. So if it's lost a half inch of water, it starts putting water back into the system. You can adjust that if you want. We'll, we'll adjust the amount of irrigation that goes down each time and how often it, it actually waters. Next you select plant maturity. So you're selecting between a new plant which needs to have a grow-in period or a plant that's already in existence and is, is established well. 
Finally, you can review all your settings and then you repeat this segment for each of your zones out there. It sounds like a lot to do, but you only have to do it once, so. Okay, so the thing to remember here is, is this controller schedules itself automatically. So based on, as I mentioned earlier, the zip code and some weather information that's there, it's trying to make a schedule. So what you want to do is you want to go in there uh, on the, when the, on the um, automatic position setting and you can look and see what the, the controller is scheduled to run. So then you can turn the button down to the bottom of the, the, um, the um, dial there and you can fine tune adjustments. For example, um, maybe after it's run for a week or so, or maybe you know right away that there's an area that never just seems to get enough water. You can go down there and you can fine tune that particular zone. You can say, I always want to run an extra 10% on zone three, or maybe three and five, and you can make those adjustments. Um, once again, go back and review all the settings. Uh, I can't emphasize that enough because um, you, you need, you know, it'll, it'll be much clearer when you look at it in this configuration. Um, and you can also, this controller keeps history, I believe, for 30 days. So if you want to, if you maybe were not in the area uh, yesterday, or they may be gone on vacation for a week, and you're not quite sure if the lawn looks dry, you can go back and review the weather history. So it will tell you if it rained. It actually measures rainfall by the tenth of an inch. So you can, it, it'll tell you if you got two tenths of an inch of rain yesterday, it will be there in the weather history. So maybe that will help you in, in uh, solving some of the dry spots or uh, any adjustments you're trying to make. So review the weather history. So hopefully that will give you a basic idea how to control or how to set up one of these controllers. If you have any more detailed questions, please give us a call. Mm -hmm.